Yo, welcome back to the MMA Fight Round. Thanks for tuning in. If you are new, it is your boy Chris, and I'm back with another picks and predictions video. This time for UFC St. Louis, Rodrigo Nascimento taking on Derek Lewis in the main event. Hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of these picks in the comments, and let me know your picks as well. Let's break it down. We got Veronica Hardy taking on JJ Aldridge to lead off the card. Veronica Hardy now working on a two fight winning streak coming off a decision win over Jamie Lynn Horth where she was the minute winner. She used her fast hands and good combinations to never let Jamie Lynn Horth build the rhythm in her fight in those first two rounds. And that third round, I will say, was super close. I think both of the fighters were starting to fatigue, but I thought, you know, Veronica Hardy should have won it by unanimous decision. They give it to her by split, but you know, it is what it is. That's what happens when you leave it to the judges. This one as well, I do see it going to the judges, but um, like I said, I think she has a much better understanding of um, just being the minute winner and having big moments, winning rounds in her fights. And I think that came in that change of camps with Dan Hardy. So she's definitely shown a lot more improvement. She's even added more takedowns into her fighting style. She was four for four in her takedowns against Juliana Miller, and she got a takedown against Jamie Lynn Horth. You know, as for JJ Aldrich, she fights her style no matter who the opponent is. She it's it's and her style is to always be in range to land her strikes where, you know, she does have clean boxing, but it's not powerful boxing and she's got good wrestling herself. So I think these two are going to cancel each other out in the um, wrestling and grappling. But JJ is slower than Hardy. So Hardy, with that new understanding of being the minute winner and um, having big moments in her fights, I'm expecting Veronica to be the faster fighter, landing combinations, and then getting out of danger quick enough for JJ to not land anything effective. So it's going to make Hardy the minute winner in this fight. And I got to pick Veronica Hardy by decision here. She's shown a lot of improvement and she's the much faster striker. So if she doesn't get held down, I can see her getting this one by decision. So Veronica Hardy is the pick by decision. Next fight. We got Kevin Jusset taking on Jared Gooden. Now, Jusset coming off his best performance in the UFC against Sung Kanan. And he was able to use that minute winner style against Sung Kanan, but he was using it with significant strikes. This guy landed 134 significant strikes, which is now the most of his weight class in his last fight. And he even mixed in a takedown. He got a submission win in his debut. You know, he's shown that he, he's well-rounded. And, you know, he doubled the strikes landed on Song Kanan in every round. Clean kickboxing, but he does defend strikes by shifting backwards. And he leaves his head open in the process. You know, he uses his agility to get out of the way of shots. And, you know, that could cost him. It, it could cost him against a guy who's a knockout puncher like Jared Gooden. But, um... You know, Jared Gooden, he's coming off a knockout win over Wellington Terman. The fight was not going his way, though. The fight was not going his way for the most part. He lost the first round uh, on all judges' scorecards. He was getting lit up with calf kicks, and his hands-down fight style was costing him because Wellington Terman was, was, was piecing him up with several shots. And, you know, he even got taken down fairly easily. Uh, you know, Wellington Terman was able to suplex uh, Jared Gooden in that first round and get a minute and 30 seconds of control time. I thought, you know, if he would have replicated that style heading into the second, it was going to be a clear decision win for Terman. But second round, he goes, uh, Jared Gooden goes into the pocket, trades with Terman. He just happens to land harder than Terman does. And he stuns Terman and, and Gooden was able to get the win. You know, Jusset. I think he is a little bit more durable when Gooden, you know, he faced Carlston Harris. He got completely outclassed in the grappling. I think there's some recency bias behind, um, you know, why people think he can win this fight. And, you know, I'm just not really buying it yet. I, I know he's a lot more experienced than Jusset. And, you know, I could just see Jusset, you know, landing that jab, 
disrupting Gooden before he can ever get going and just using his in and out style to force Gooden to come into the pocket. And I think Jusette has the better understanding than Wellington Terman does to fight in the pocket, you know. So I'm going to go with Jusette here. I think he should run away with this fight by decision. Um, yeah, Kevin Jusette is the pick here, 30 27. I know Gooden is durable. So I, um, I'm going to pick Jusette here by decision. Next fight, we got Jake Hadley taking on Charles Johnson. So tough fight here. Charles Johnson coming off a gritty decision win over Azat Maksum. And, you know, he got knocked down, which is the first time in his seven fights in the UFC that he got knocked down. And he was placed in a dark stroke all in the first few sequences of the fight. So he regains composure and he delivers a classic comeback performance. And he was using his high volume striking. He was able to double the significant strike count of Azat Maksum. And in this fight, unlike any other fight, the takedown defense was showing up. All right. So he's clearly, you know, he defended four out of six takedowns and earned himself a decision win. The guy is addressing his weaknesses and he's converting into a much more complete fighter. He's always had that high pace striking, you know, decent striking defense. I'll say decent, but uh, he struggled to keep fight standing. And that was always the problem for him. The time this time, you know, he's got a matchup against another well-rounded fighter in Jake Hadley. And, you know, Hadley is a well-rounded fighter. I'll say that, you know, eight finishes out of his 10 wins, five by submission, three by knockout. But in the UFC, he's just two and two, you know, with wins over guys who aren't in the UFC anymore anymore. And, and in his last one, he just had no answers for Cody Durden um, in the grappling. He got taken down four times and controlled for seven minutes and 25 seconds which is half the fight. So, you know, I'm just, I'm not really sold yet on Jake Hadley and I'm going to lean Charles Johnson on this one. It's, it's dog or pass for me right now. Both of these guys are durable and, you know, neither have ever been finished. So I do see this fight going to decision, but Hadley, you know, no wins over anyone still in the UFC. And now he's got a tough fight here against a guy who's known for not quitting on himself. He has a ton of experience with 20 fights, I can see Johnson winning this one by decision, just avoiding the takedowns, being the quicker fighter in the striking as the fight goes on. And, you know, Hadley, he's also notorious for having really bad weight cuts. So I think that's going to affect his cardio against a guy like Johnson, who, you know, you got to be ready for 15 minutes when you're taking this guy. So Johnson, he will take advantage of that. I'm picking Johnson here by decision. I think he gets it done in his hometown. Charles Johnson is the pick. Next fight. We got Billy Golf taking on Trey Waters. Another interesting matchup here. Both guys just 1-0 in the UFC. Trey Waters is going to have the height and reach advantage. 6-5 at welterweight just seems like a cheat code. I don't know how these guys make 170, but he's done it before. So he did it against Josh Quinlan, made weight. And, you know, Waters, he uses his height to his, to his advantage very well. By, um, you know, he has this hands down style to, to tempt you into thinking you can land, but he counters back with clean shots, technical fight ending punches. You know, we saw that uh, in his contender series fight against Bonfim. It only took, you know, one takedown for Bonfim to get a submission over Waters, though, you know, and, and that is concerning to me. So, like I said, only one and all these guys are both very green. But then against Josh Quinlan in his debut, he defended seven out of eight takedowns. You know, he, he, he puts on a striking clinic on Quinlan in that fight by staying on the outside of his range and just piecing him up for three rounds to earn a decision win. And, you know, Waters is a problem for anyone if you aren't going to take him down because of that height and reach. If you try to get on the inside, he can finish you. And if you stay on the outside, he can pop shot you at distance. So, man. This guy, you know, he's got good calf kicks as well. It's going to take someone with good grappling or someone with a grit mentality to get inside of Waters distance and let off shots to try and beat Waters. And, you know, Billy Goff, I will say he does have that grit mentality. He will he finish Waters is the question, really. You know, Billy Goff, he has nine wins with seven knockouts, one of them on contender series 
and one in his debut. So he's coming off two back-to-back -back knockout performances, both in the first round. He's not tempted to take a punch in order to, to land one, you know, of his own. And, and he's been dropped in fights before, but he never gives up on himself. He will keep coming forward and he has you near the fence. If he has you near the fence, he will look to hit you with dirty boxing. This guy, the, um, these two, they're very young into their careers. Only nine fights for Trey Waters and uh, 11 fights for Goff. I think Goff has gone through more adversity because he's had these get rocked and comeback performances but waters is much more technical in his approach and you know i've gone back and forth with this one for now i gotta go waters by decision i think waters is going to keep golf on the outside the same way he did with quinlan and you know he doesn't have any cardio issues i can see him doing it for three rounds golf has a chance to end this fight for sure i think he has a chance to put uh trey waters lights out but i think that's what he's gonna have to do and it's gonna be tough man i gotta go waters by decision for right now might pick flip later on in the in, in the week but trey waters for now is the pick next fight we got tabitha ricci taking on tisha pennington tisha you know she hasn't fought in two years she had a baby in that time off and in her last run it was a split decision loss to Mackenzie Dern where you know watching it back you can make the case that she won that fight you know but Dern she was having moments both in the striking and in the grappling and you know she keeps a good pace uh Tisha she keeps a good pace does a great job of being on the offense and defense for the entire fight she's never been finished Tisha has a ton of experience as well she was she was always tough to beat and I'm, I'm emphasis on was because this is this is a long layoff for her it's two years since she's been in the cage and you know tabitha ricci while tisha has been away she's fought four times and she's four and two in the ufc one loss up a weight class against manon firo and then in her most recent fight against loopy where she wasn't able to get the takedowns and loopy just outstruck her you know apart from the loopy fight she did a great job of getting the takedowns and being able to have better moments than all of her other opponents because of the control time and and i think ricci is becoming more well-rounded every time she steps out there um her striking it's it's not it's not the best she's upped her strike count a lot in these past two fights though and she's shown more willingness to strike but she's got to mix in the grappling if she wants to win this fight. And, you know, considering the layoff, I think she can get some takedowns on Tisha. So I'm picking Tabitha Ricci to get this one done by decision. I'm just not confident in this pick. I'm basing this off the two-year layoff of Tisha uh, Pennington because before that, you know, she was tough to beat. She's always been tough to beat. And, and honestly, I don't think she is coming off a loss. I think she's coming off a win. So... You can make the case for Tisha here, but just long layoff and, and too much uh, factors that play into it for me to pick her. So Tisha, uh, Tabitha Ricci is the pick here by decision. Next fight, we got Esteban Ribovics taking on Terrence McKinney. And you know, what I'm seeing here is a guy who's durable and has never had a problem with cardio against a guy who can only end the fight in the first round. And I think McKinney will always be live in all of his fights for a knockout or a submission. You know, he's well-rounded. He's shown us that, you know, he does have that cardio issue. You know, he cannot make it past the first. He has lost every fight that has gone past the first. 100% finish rate is pretty scary. It's tempting. You know, seven knockouts, eight submission wins. He gets it done in a variety of ways to show you. He's very well-rounded. He's a savage, you know. He's got a round. Uh, he's got just one round of cardio, and <laughs> he's going up against Ribovix, you know, who has already shown us his durability. Ribovix has never been finished in his only loss against Loik Radzabov. He got taken down 11 times, but he never accepted bottom position, and he got a knockdown late in round two. And I think the blueprint. On how to beat McKinney is out there you know I think Ribovics can execute the game plan 
McKinney will be live in that first, and I will never doubt him in there. But after that, I do. I just, I, I just, I, I struggle. You know, I don't see him getting it done. And it's what he's shown us time and time again. I got to pick Ribovix here by late finish. Unless McKinney has figured that out, or if he can get it done in the first, you know, Ribovix has. What you can say here is Ribovix has definitely had some shaky first rounds. So is he going to have to be a lot more composed in that first round than all of his other fights? Yes. And um, with that understanding, we could see we could see McKinney go into the uh, second round and third. But that's where I got to favor Ribovix to get it done after that. So my pick here is Ribovix by late finish. Next fight. We got Vyacheslav Borsev taking on Chase Hooper. Now, striker versus grappler here. Hooper, you know, he's worked on a two-fight winning streak. But, you know, guys, let's be honest. Jordan Levitt and Nick Fiore, they do not possess the level of striking that Borsev has. And, you know, Borsev is a phenomenal striker, knockout power. His wins in the UFC aren't over anyone to be boasting about. But he's definitely filling out the holes in his game as he goes you know he got taken down 11 times against the casey and against mike davis nine times and you know those two are phenomenal grapplers credit to them you know for exposing borsev's uh wrestling but these guys you know they're they're getting takedowns with double the accuracy that chase hooper is getting it you know chase hooper has a 22 percent takedown accuracy and you know he has improved his stand-up but this couldn't be any more clear of a striker versus grappler matchup than any other. You know, I don't expect Hooper to hold his own too long if this fight stays standing. And, you know, the move to lightweight has been successful. But Jordan Levitt, Nick Fiore, they don't have knockout power. You know, I, I can see it going either way. I can see it either going really well for, <laughs> for uh, one of these guys or just total just awful you know if Borshev gets taken down it could just take one takedown for Hooper to land a submission and if this fight stays standing just a bit too long it could just take one strike from Borshev to knock out Chase Hooper you know I'm gonna side with Borshev to get this one done if he gets taken down Hooper might just need one mistake but um I think he keeps this fight standing on and and I think even if he does get taken down he he might end up in some scrambles training with uh team alpha male he's got to be in those positions all the time man so I, I i think he keeps this fight standing borshev all the way borshev i gotta pick him by finish here or by decision on damage so that's the pick next fight we got robelis de spain taking on waldo cortez acosta heavyweight showdown robelis is back after his less than a minute first round knockout over Josh Parisian and you know he finished him walking backwards so he's now 5-0 and without a single fight leaving the first round knockout power Olympic Taekwondo background and I think that's gonna work in favor in his favorite for this fight you know Waldo is a boxer with a heavy lead foot he has a terrible habit of eating leg kicks man and in his last one against Andre Olofsky it was just a very underwhelming performance. He was sluggish and lackluster. I, it was it was as if he never had any intention of, of trying to finish Andre Arlovsky. And I guarantee if he fights like that against Robelis, he's getting finished. All right. No matter what round this, 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 this round, no matter what round this fight goes, because Waldo isn't going to tire Robelis out with that style. You know, I don't see... Um, Waldo, if he's not trying to knock out Andre Arlovsky, how is he going to try to knock out Robelis? You know, so, you know, Waldo, he's not going to tire out on Robelis. But with that style, Robelis isn't going to tire out either because Robelis is going to be the one coming forward. And, you know, what he's been doing, I could just see him doing that again. I can see him getting another first round finish, being the more dangerous fighter. He can also chop away at the leg of Waldo because he just seems to think that you know he can wear it Waldo thinks he can wear these leg kicks and and you know 
that former Olympic Taekwondo background should show in this fight. So give me Robelis here by finish. I think he gets it done. Um, you know, the cardio issues are going to be a question mark. But while though fighting the way he does, I don't see anyone getting tired that way. Andre looked like he could go another two rounds in that fight. So, and that was a 40 plus year old Andre Alovsky at the time. So give me Robelis here by finish. Next fight. We got Mateus Rombeski taking on Diego Ferreira. And Rombeski has been proven to be the real deal. You know, 3-0 in the UFC. He's gotten it done by submission, by knockout, and by decision. You know, he's an amazing grappler. We saw how he was able to keep it, uh, keep Loic Radzabov down with his jiu-jitsu threat and just overall size, man. This dude is strong. He's a huge guy for the weight class. And now he gets a step up in competition against a veteran in Diego Ferreira. And, you know, Diego, despite the win over an aging Michael Johnson, who's been on the decline, you know, that's, that's, let's not forget, you know, before that he was on a three fight losing streak, 38 years old. It's no surprise that he's the underdog here. He's got a well-rounded game. He's always been a submission threat, but he's actually got four knockout wins in the UFC. So, you know, in the losses to Gamrot and Gregor Gillespie and, and Benil Darius, they were all able to exploit Diego's takedown defense. And, you know, Diego, 63% takedown defense. Although, you know, he's always a threat, he's going to be facing a guy who's seven years younger and the strength difference, the strength difference is going to show of the two. So I have to favor Rebecca to get this one done. I think... Mateus is going to be able to exploit that uh, takedown defense as well. He's a phenomenal grappler himself. He's top heavy. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. I can see Mateus getting a ground and pound finish or just working a decision win over the veteran uh, Diego Ferreira in this fight. So give me Mateus Rombeski here. I think he's the real deal. And he deserves this step up in competition. Next fight. Another fighter getting a step up in competition, Sean Woodson taking on Alex Caceres. You know, 11 and 1 record for Sean Woodson. It's very deceiving because he's got an extensive boxing background and he's shown it in all his fights. His distance, man his distance management and jabs are his best tools. He's also got amazing takedown defense. For a guy so slim, you would think fighters can, you know, body lock him quickly but he's quick he's quick and his takedown defense has held up time and time again with woodson you either have to be all the way in or all the way out of his range otherwise he will pick you apart and caceres has that all the way out fight style so this could either complicate things for woodson or make this a very boring fight you know caceres is using his unorthodox striking to get to his slick grappling and he doesn't chase takedowns but if he does see an opportunity to take your back he most certainly will and you know when he's not grappling he will stay on the outside and try to hit you and not be hit you know that's that's never been easy to do against woodson because woodson has the his distance management like i said is, is his best tool and woodson has only been submitted once against Julian Arosa, but he was winning the entire fight. It wasn't until the last few minutes of the last round. I just think he fatigued. And you know, that was four years ago. He's had six fights since. I think he's much improved. And I'm picking Woodson to get this one done by decision. Um, Caceres, he's very durable. And Woodson has four wins by decision out of his five in the UFC. So I do see this fight going over two and a half. And I got Woods by decision here. Just being able to deal with the blitz from Caceres and consistently landing the jab to just score points in each round. Give me Sean Woodson to get this one done. Next fight, we got Alonzo Menefield taking on Carlos Alberg. Crazy. It's crazy to the last guy to beat Alonzo Menefield is, is William Knight. You know, we can officially say this guy has definitely improved since then. You know, the wins he has um 
prior to Justin Jacoby, I, I didn't think I didn't I didn't hold much weight, you know. But Dustin Jacoby in that fight, you know, it was not going well for Alonzo, but his power was the difference maker. And his power is always the difference maker in his fights. You know, Jacoby was the faster striker of the two. And in the first, he looked his best, landing low kicks and keeping Menafield busy, forcing him on the back foot. But Alonzo, he used his head hunting. He was just head hunting and head hunting. And I think he does it too much, but it worked in his favor in that fight because he drops Jacoby in the second round. And in the third, Jacoby just was never able to bounce back from, from the knockdown. Alonzo bringing the pressure, forcing Jacoby near the cage and, and made it his fight. Earns a decision win. But guys, he's 36 now. And that head hunting style against someone who's a lot faster than Jacoby and Carlos Olberg. I just don't see Olberg um, being there to get hit. So, you know, Olberg, he trains at City Kickboxing with guys like Adesanya and Volkanovski. And these guys all have great footwork and speed. Olberg has those same skills and he's now finished four of his last five opponents. I think he's not going to be there to get hit. And I think he runs away uh, with this one by decision. Only thing that concerns me is if Alonzo tries to get Olberg down, but Alonzo doesn't have the greatest takedown accuracy or fight IQ. So I'm picking Olberg by decision here. I think he stays away from the danger and just puts on a striking clinic on Alonzo Menafield. Um, give me the faster, younger striker here in this fight. Carlos Olberg to get this one done. Next fight, we got Joaquin Buckley taking on their Sultan Ruzi Boyov in the co-main event. Another six foot five fighter at welterweight. This is getting ridiculous. You know, I'll start this off with I'm not a big fan of Joaquin Buckley. You know, I say that because I'm just not convinced yet of his game. You know, he's hittable, doesn't have the best chin. And since he's moved down to welterweight, he's finished Andre Fialho. He's gone to decision with Alex Morono and then fought a completely different washed version of Vicente Luque that we all know. You know, so my point is, I'm just not convinced yet. And you can say the exact same thing about his opponent, Ruzi Boyev, but Buckley, he's fought 12 times in the UFC. So we shouldn't be questioning um, his skill set yet. <laughs> Each time I've seen him fight, I see holes in his game. But Ruzi Boyev, only two fights in the UFC and both first round finishes. So there's a lot to speculate about about him in this fight as well he's also yet to be taken down we don't know how Ruzi Boyev would do off his back in the UFC and you know he's looked great against Bruno Ferreira and Cedricus Dumas but those were both at middleweight and this time he's coming down at welterweight um watching his interview he mentions it not being much of an issue but just why 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 are you coming down to welterweight you're six foot five you know in the UFC, he's been nothing but a killer. Heavy hands, knockout power, and he's composed. He's not ever rushing anything. We saw him make Dumas miss almost all his strikes. Dumas went one for 16 on total strikes in that fight. I want to be clear though, you know, Dumas and Buckley are on two different levels when it comes to uh, when it comes to MMA. So I give Buckley the edge and experience. But Ruzi Boyev, already over 40 fights, he's no stranger to uh, getting in the cage, man. This is a tough fight to pick here. I'm going to be picking Ruzi Boyev. I've seen Buckley struggle with lengthy fighters before, like Nasruddin Imovov and, and Kevin Holland. And I think Ruzi Boyev, although we haven't seen enough of him yet to confidently pick him here, I just believe in his hype. I believe in the hype. He's got it. He's got the striking to knock out Buckley. He's got the striking to knock out anyone he's up against because because he's so lengthy. He's got the height. And if he gets taken down, I think he's got a slick submission game. 20 submission wins by him in the regional scene. Buckley does have a chance here, but I'm only saying that because this is at welterweight. I just don't know how that uh, weight cut is going to affect Ruzi Boyev. If this was up at middleweight, I'd be picking Ruzi Boyev with a lot more confidence. But I'm picking Ruzi Boyev here still. Give me Ruzi Boyev to get this one done by finish. Next fight. We got 
Derek Lewis taking on Rodrigo Nascimento in the main event. Hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of these picks. And the pick is Derek Lewis, man. This is a setup fight for Lewis, in my opinion, to get a knockout in St. Louis. Rodrigo, you know, he's going to this, he's going to split decision with 40-year-old Alir Latifi. He's going to split decision with Tanner Boser, who was never really a true heavyweight. And then decision win over Dantel Mays in his last one. And his last loss was by knockout against Chris Dawkins, another guy who's not really a true featherweight, uh, heavyweight, <laughs> featherweight, Jesus. Dawkins was able to fold Nasi Mento, though, with a left hook. And it was all she wrote. And Chris Dawkins, man, like I said, not a true heavyweight. The guy hasn't beaten anyone who is going to test his chin like Lewis will. Most knockouts in the UFC for Derek Lewis. And Lewis hasn't been given any favors. Taking on guys like Dalton Almeida and Sergey Spivak, who they just want no part in the striking with him. Rodrigo doesn't have the grappling strengths like those two. I don't see him being able to hold Lewis down. And that's the only way he wins this fight. So give me uh give me Derek Lewis here to just be the bulldozer and knock out Rodrigo Nascimento in St. Louis for the crowd and and end this man of main event early. Derek Lewis is the pick here. And there you guys have it. Those are my picks for UFC St. Louis. Let me know what you guys think of these picks in the comments. I'm out of here. Peace.